OnlyFans. How much do you make on there? Um, Should I join? I also work very hard at other things, I just want to say. You don't have to give me a dollar amount, unless you want to. I've definitely made at least It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an S, and the S is for phenomenal. (laughs) Did you want me to do your intro? (laughs) Welcome back to Sophia with an S. I thought you were going to do the Sophia. Sophia. (laughs) Guys. Welcome to Sophia with an F. This has been long, long, long overdue. Woo-hoo. I am with Tana Mojo, Brooke Schofield. 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 And you pronounce my keyboard head smashing name right? Because, Schofield. well, yours because is pretty readily available online. True, but also yours just looks crazy. Just like written out. Like I think, my, I think my parents were like writing my birth certificate and just smashed their face on a keyboard. And they were like, that's fine. That's so they, I mean. have, they have a different last name. I don't know what they're doing now. No, um, actually, my dad was born with a different last name. Um, His last name was Grills. I didn't know that. Um, And then his stepdad's last name was Mojo. So he changed it to his stepdad's last name. So I became a Mojo, like, by chance. I'm really happy you aren't Tana Grills. Tana Grills would have been amazing. I thought that would have been sick. It would have been amazing for my rapper era. Yeah, but it would have been, like, Ben Kicks. Like, like it's just, like, a really, like... (laughs) Ben Kicks is so crazy. Like, what is Ben Kicks' last name? <laughs> but also, Sophia the Neff, Franklin with a Y. Like, that's yeah. like, like, why? Kind of a rich name, though, overall. Like, Sophia with Sophia. It is. It's like, fuck your F. spelling. Like, I'm going like, to do Franklin it how I want it. Franklin with a Y. Like, it's very much Cape Cod. Is it? <laughs> in my, in I've my- never <laughs> met a Franklin with a Y. But that's hot. Okay, I am beyond, I'm elated that you guys are here. We just spoke for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half Mm. on- On cancel. On canceled. Mm. Guys, go check it out. And we talked about something I wanted to start the whole thing with, Mm. which is Tana- Bailed on call her daddy. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) No, Tana, you glance over the being rude to me thing. The oh. Sophia <laughs> shaking tweet. Uh, okay, so apparently, <laughs> no, well, apparently, oh no, allegedly, well, uh, no, apparently, <laughs> as in I just really found out about it, which is sad because it was my own tweet. Um, at the time that I went on call her daddy, you guys mm-hmm. had just gone through like the breakup, mm-hmm. and so I guess I tweeted. Not I guess this happened, but I'm saying I sincerely just found <laughs> out about this because I was on drugs. <laughs> So hard at the time with the Twitter. And I think I went on Call Her Daddy too, being like, I'm sober. I was sober for a week. Mm-hmm. Like, figure it out. I mean, um, sober for a week is a long time. Maybe like two weeks. I was trying at the time. I was trying, but just failing a lot with addiction. And at the time, I was a girl with a lot of Xanax and a lot of Twitter followers. And those things should never go in hand, hand yeah. in hand at all. <laughs> um, and I've, I've posted some mental health aspects on that, so I'm just going to glaze over that. But apparently when I finally went on Call Her Daddy, years after me bailing, I tweeted, Sophia with an F is shaking. <laughs> 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 and here fair, we are. To be fair, I can still <laughs> giggle. Like, I know where my intention was at. Like, it was just like something funny I thought I would she say. She probably just thought that she would never have the opportunity or like... Be in the no. position where <laughs> no. she was going to get called I out for I think even it. at the time, I was just like, this is funny. She'll think it's funny. I don't think I knew that I there was- I think it's a little funny. At the time, there was like a whole hate campaign happening. Yeah. And, and I then, definitely did not know that. Right. But then you just kind of piled on a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, I want to- Let me look at you. We'll start this off with an apology. I'm no stranger to those. I'm so sorry if I added to that. Because to be fair with you, I had no idea that at the time. Even just now when you said it for the first time on Cancel, I was like, damn, I'm not that type. <laughs> Here's the thing. I will hate on a bitch. I will add to a hate train if I hate you. Mm-hmm. If you're an awful person. I didn't know you. Like, I was sincerely just making a joke on Twitter. So if I added to any of whatever was going on in that realm at the time, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> Sophia with an F is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet that shit. Go. No, but when I was just on your show, when I said the tweet, when I read it out loud to Tana, she was like blinking like, wait, what? Like, what did I say? Like, you had no recollection of tweeting that. I have no idea (laughs) anything I tweeted, posted, facetuned, and posted. (laughs) Filmed on TikTok and posted probably from realistically 2019 to 2021. Right. Like, I was 
Xanax is a hell of a drug. Mm, I mean, I've taken it. Sure it. I've like gotten caught up in it a little. And it's I not- joke and write it off to simply just Xanax, but it wasn't even that. I was just in an extreme party era. Like I was just very yeah. crazy. I was very passive. I would have sober moments where I would like come to and not want to be like that. I think I hadn't come to terms with the fact that I had an addictive personality and mm-hmm. how to manage substances yet. So I was like, I'm just a party girl. And like that was like my brand at the time. Like people fed into that. So it was easy to feed into it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I just hadn't learned a lot. And, and she got those Twitter we fingers. Were, we were just talking about that on the podcast the other day. I was talking about how this girl said something in a TikTok. And I was like, three years ago, I would have made a seven part series on a tangent being insane. But now I've grown so much from that. Like, I just used to hit post like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. It meant nothing to me. Like, I would just, my stream of consciousness was just online on every platform. Right. And you're like, whatever. Right. Yeah. Which I'm kind of like that right now. And it's, and are you? <laughs> well, I'm just like, oh, it's fine. Like, I'm not big enough for it to matter. And but like, it it will matter. To an extent, <laughs> like, it was fun. There were so many fun things that came out of that. But it was like, there was no screening process at the time. Like, I, I didn't, like, for example, I tweeted Sophia with enough of shaking. I didn't, like, look into, like, y'all's beef. Were you on a hate train? What was going on with you guys? It was just like, I think this is funny in the moment. Like, I'm like, my and joke was. was like, I'm and- taking over the co-host <laughs> presence, you know, like, yes, oh, like, like yes. me and Alex will be with an F is shaking. But like, now I would like go into like, how could this negatively affect me? That was never a thought in my life. How could this negatively affect me? One, a thousand percent. And it's not like you tweeted something outrageous towards me. It was just so She's like, fuck Sophia with an F. Yeah. I'll yeah, fucking no. kill that bitch. In that case, you it should beat my ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then maybe I wouldn't be sitting here right now. But no, yeah. it was it was funny now. I can actually, I can look back at times of my life like that too, though, where like I was in a scandal or people really hated me and it was like trending worldwide to fucking hate my guts Mm -hmm. and people that necessarily didn't realize the impact of them like joining in on it or like joking at me online. Like, you know what I mean? Like someone just like trying to think of like a making a, a passive a like, joke about it yeah or just joking about it like at the time just I was like, like joining I was like, in not another it. person oh <laughs> my god but, but i can look back now and just be like they didn't know right like, like you you don't hold it against them it's like yeah you know and people just don't know the severity i guess of what's going on in your world when things like that are happening right but again, I do know that. So had I known that, I probably it, wouldn't have said it. But it on it wasn't like that big. I feel like I sound so stupid saying this to you right now, but I've never really thought about that until right now. And that is a crazy, crazy <laughs> part of your journey. Thank you. Like, I mean, I wasn't even trying to like come on here and be like, I'm gonna make Tampa say sorry. And no. Understand what the I fuck think, she did. I mean, no. I, I'm in my but, 2023, like, I'm grown. I, my empathy era is at full-blown effect. Like, it's a great – one day you're going to – you're going to write a book one day, right? Thank you. Are you? Of course. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys will too. I always say that some of my biggest scandals are, like, beefs with people. We were talking about this on – um one of the last episodes of Cancelled because I had had this really big scandal with this guy, Idubs, and years later, he'd finally apologized to me. And at the time, I'd lost millions of followers. and everyone Millions? Was, oh, yeah. I lost a million subscribers like that. It was wild. It how was wild. fast? A million how fast? Less than a month. <laughs> everyone else came up fast. <laughs> um, and the whole world hated me. Everywhere I went in public, I, like people would say the craziest shit to me, like in public all the time to my face. Like I... It was such an insane time. But I, we were talking about the fact that to her, I was like, I would never change it because it's like, it helped me grow so much as a person. It's a huge part of my journey. And I can't wait to just like tell that story one day, you know? Of course. Also, when did you like start popping off? Because you're 24. Mm-hmm. So how old were you when you like started getting a bunch of like followers, whatever, subscribers? I started YouTube videos when I was like 14, 15. That is fucking crazy. It is weird to think about. And that's why so much of my journey is me being a fucking idiot because I sincerely grew up <laughs> online. Yeah. yeah, that's hard. That She said that before. Like, imagine, like, the normal mistakes you make during that time and then put, like, a camera no. in front of you. Like, but I, also, I put the camera in front of me. It's not like, like, <laughs> it's not like I was Kylie Jenner and, like, the fucking <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jenkins production was before me. No, it was it was me doing that. But... Do you think there should be like an age limit on when you can take videos of yourself and post them online? I go so back and forth with that thought. I do. Because it's like, there's a huge part of me that's like, fuck, I wish that never, like, I wish I didn't say all these things on the internet. But at the same time, 
you know, but obviously I realize I'm an anomaly to that sentiment. You know, there's so many kids just posting stuff online and maybe they shouldn't be. And I always look at the TikTok generation now too. And I'm like, I can't imagine having TikTok when I was that cringy because they can just go up like that, like five That's, million it's views It's so overnight. immediate on TikTok, which is so crazy. Yeah. And you can literally end Remember your career Remember that video so quickly. of that girl? This is a very niche I know you're, exactly what you're going to say. The vine where she's flat ironing or curling her no, hair. I didn't. <laughs> and, her, and the entire chunk of her hair comes off. Yeah. Do you know what I'm I don't about? No, I don't remember it. I promise I have a point here. <laughs> no, I know. And guys, that is it. Like, <laughs> this girl never thought that this would be like one of the most viral videos of all time, you know? I'm so mm. excited right now. It's so sad. Oh, it's sad? Well, it's, it's just exciting. like traumatizing. It's all of the above. So like this girl at this age just was filming like something being young, you know, right. and this ends up getting like a hundred million views. Well, Eventually. it's okay. She's about to do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my sweet girl. Look. <laughs> Sorry. Like that. That's there a person no now. No way. <laughs> the point of my sentiment is, is no that she way. never thought filming this video that that would be something that like would pivotally change her life forever. You know, like two hundred million people that saw is that. The crazy. Wait, I'm still so confused about how that happened though. Like, can that happen? That yeah, what was her curling that, iron how, on? Like, how, Satan how mode? hot does like, it have yeah, to that's be? Crazy. That's insane. Was it an extension? And that's what I was thinking. No. It looks like it's plastic hair, but that's her hair. Okay. As a bitch with fellow tracks, that okay. was real hair. <laughs> I am the bitch that's had every type of hair extension, real? plastic, anything. Mm. I've never had it just disappear. I'm so confused. I'm worried Do about you know her. Where's she now? Where is she now? Child, weirdly, huh? When I like, <laughs> when I would get little, like you know how you get like little flyaway hairs right here, like your yeah. little front pieces. Mm -hmm. I would just cut them off with scissors to the root. Oh my god! And I'd rather have a. Bald I had a friend who did that with her widow's flyaway. peak, and then it just grows back like this. Okay, what was your point about the girl with the video? Uh -oh. <laughs> Tiana, Tiana's like, I used to have it's a like, widow's peak. It was crazy. No. <laughs> no, it's like. She filmed that video for Vine. She was very young. She was mm -hmm. in her formative years. She definitely, the fact that she uploaded that even at the time was brave. But again, as a child, True. you're uploading all these things on the internet. You have no idea. 200 million people end up seeing that. And like, it's probably, she's probably what, 25 now? Older, probably. And that will always be a pivotal point of her life. Maybe something that people bring up and see her. Or like mm -hmm. all of those, like all of those like viral ass videos of young people. And mm -hmm. I think it's terrifying. But at the same time, how It how allowed you to be in this mansion, by the way. Me, Tiana at least. Lives but <laughs> Tiana's like, rich. Her house is insane. She invited me to it. Well, point B. <laughs> point I sound like a groupie. I sound like a fucking groupie. You can be my groupie anytime. Mm -hmm. But sounds like, like now there's no way to put a regulation on that. Like the internet yeah. is only turning into more and more of a thing where that's just going to be. Yeah, it's easier and easier every day for somebody to post it. Yeah, that's just going to be a common thing forever now is young kids posting something, it going viral, it being a part of their formative years, it being something that follows them for life. It will never change. So what's no. the, what's like the age guideline on TikTok? I think anyone can use TikTok. No, I think or you're. Or 12. Or like. Yeah, like the right? moms. And yeah, the and they kids kick people to. off sometimes if you're not like of age. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, sorry. You can be underage and use TikTok. I think that's thank God the takeaway. Uh, I don't know. You can be underage and drink alcohol if you have a fake ID. What are they going to implement? That's really going to like you know make sure that underage whatever underage is like not use the platforms. young basically essentially you're saying that like minors should not be able to I utilize mean, social media to an extent how do they regulate that you know i don't even know if that's how i feel because i think you were using it at 14 15. Well, don't use me as the example girl but i should <laughs> no, I mean, but, but I, it worked no but i should because look part. at your life now like would you take that back no no it saved me from a lot but i i can recognize that i'm the anomaly in that like yeah. you know that that i'm the one percent mm -hmm. that like that social media saved me mm -hmm. like you know that it saved me from a really dark life but i worry about the rest of the world but it i think it's only evolving yeah yes evolving we don't know if it's evolving in a good way or a bad way
We'll we're just out. so far gone as a society now, social media wise. <laughs> like we're never, we're never going to revert back to a place. Like now we're moving into the AI world. Like Apple just posted something today where Apple's releasing a product in the next year called Apple Vision. It's the VR goggles, mm-hmm. and it's Apple. Like it's like you can you you put the VR goggles on, but they're Apple, so you can text and FaceTime, and it's all in front of you. You can be on a plane in the commercials, like you can be on a plane and send yourself to be watching a movie on a beach, like in these VR goggles, like. We're only black. That's like further. it really is kind of scary. It's like so cool, but so scary. Mm. Like young kids using social media is the least of our problems. Yeah, right? and I will like, imagine like exactly. what's going to happen to exactly. the iPad kids if we ha- suddenly have VR goggles, like in the Bye. middle of catch everywhere. <laughs> but what sucks is I know what I will hot take cancel me for this. I will be such a fucking iPad mom. Like VR mom, put your goggles on. There you go. <laughs> on it, Shut I guess. Up. Like, sh- <laughs> you want to go to Disneyland? Put your goggles you on. Want, you want to be on Magic Mountain? Here you go. There you go. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited to eventually have like 10 kids. Like take care of yourself. They do start to take care of each other. How many kids do you want? Uh, I was thinking two. Um, I want my kids to be like the coked out Duggar family. You want 10? Ten- <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. I'm pretty sure no. the Duggar family was coked out. <laughs> Who? The, the Duggar family? Who is? With the long denim skirts. The long denim skirt is coming back. They and were it's like giving all Duggar Oh my God. Oh my like God. Yes. Them. Yes. Yes. I do remember now. I do remember now. Like I don't really think soon. They should. I think they are releasing a documentary about the truth but, of it. But so that, many was, kids. that was like a few years back, right? They were yeah. like eight years back. Okay. I had a friend in high school yes. who had that though. They had like 11 siblings and they just would start to take care of each other. And then, well, and yeah, then the mom the doesn't have to siblings. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. But also I don't think it's necessarily healthy if you just have a ton of kids and you let like, you know, the 14 year old take care of like the two year old. It's definitely not. You know? I agree Like, Like it's dope. It's definitely unhealthy like, as fuck. Well. Because like you don't have to do anything. Like your mm. older kid will take care of the younger one. Yeah. So it's dope in that way. But Probably for probably wrong pro- pro- for sure. Watch, wrong. watch your kids. <laughs> hey, I'm from Utah. Like a bunch of more. You probably saw that so much growing a up. Lot, big a families. Lot. Okay, so Brooke, Tana, Brenna, Brenna, if you will. What? Oh, Brenna! Yeah. Oh my God, that's your couple. We're name. just trying it out. Yeah, I love. I'm gonna use it for the rest <laughs> of for the rest of this podcast. Brenna, you guys are best friends. Have a podcast together. You had a huge falling out, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was huge. I don't know if it was huge. It was and horrible. Now, and now you guys are here. So doing who a podcast says together. you and Alex won't be back on Call Her Daddy? In I mean, five you never know. So we had a bit of a falling out. We did. It was like a little. It we, was literally almost the same time that your whole situation no way. happened. Okay. Well, no, the but, same time that I went back on Call Her Daddy after our first situation was the same time our falling out happened. Yeah. <laughs> Hence why when she tweeted Sophia shaking, it was like inadvertently. Brooke was at you, also yeah, shaking. Right? She, I was shaking. I was at mm-hmm. home shaking. Very different scenarios here. Um but <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, letting a man fuck up a friendship at all is kind of dumb. And just like um, the ugliest, not ugliest, but like just the most the random man. man. It was like such an unimportant thing. That blew up so hard. So for you no guys reason. both fucked the same dude? No. <laughs> Not no. no. Yes, no. We still can't actually. Can I say this? To this day, I think we still can't come to a full agreement on the which situation. We just chose to move no, on. From she's, it. Which no, she's. Which is fine. Th- this is what really happened, though. So oh. obviously, the situation. I I did I was in the wrong a hundred percent. But it was like I didn't think he was like super important. We all just like thought it was, or I thought it wasn't a big deal. It was like whatever. And I came home and they were literally watching play by play like every interaction that we had on the security tapes. <laughs> Tiana and the entire group of everybody. Essentially, I was this was my fuck buddy, but I kind of liked him looking back. Get a grip. You know what I mean? And it was also, again, like I even said in that era was a very party fueled, fucked up fueled era. Mm -hmm. Same time as my tweet. (laughs) Um, And it was just a wild era. And I was hooking up with this guy. I think I liked him a little more than I wanted to admit. Brooke and I had just started becoming Better than good friends, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay, and so you guys weren't like um, soul sisters. We, like, so no, it was no. like like in the beginning of us being really close. Okay. But, but like she was in the group chat. Like she was in our friend group. Like we'd become close enough. And she was up with them. I was mad. I took it too far. I made a video. 
I thought it'd be a fun story time. It ended up being like an insane beef. Still on her <laughs> channel called My Best Friend Hooked Up With My, or My Best Friend Fucked My my not but, guy because I wanted to be monetized. I'd never say fuck or something like <laughs> sto- story time slash rant slash scandal. It's got like to four fair, million the views. In, the entire video was about the worst week of my life. My ex boyfriend, who I'm now talking, but to that's again, not what it's called. Fucked on me, yeah, th- <laughs> no at all. And um, <laughs> you're like, I'm better now. I made this video, and then she made a video back, and it was beef, and it was this whole thing. I was but at wrong the time, for ever making the video. I was definitely exaggerated and I was wrong and for hooking up with the guy. So mm-hmm. we were both in the wrong. And we both are very much like my my perspective or the highway, I think. And at the time, at least, our videos might have given that. <laughs> Mine was called Two Tana from Mindy. She called me Mindy. And by the way, I oh, didn't, I'm like, who's Mindy? I didn't do social media at the time. So I was just a strange, like, <laughs> strange person <laughs> who all of a sudden. Who I cared about. <laughs> but but I she was a strange person. Well, it was just like the only thing that I was known for at that point was just that. Like mm-hmm. I, I didn't have any social I media give presence people at names all. In my story times, and to be fair, I never thought people would find it. To this day, I probably uploaded two hundred story times, and I would say when it comes down to people finding the people in the story time, that's in she's the top like three. She's blonde, five three. She like literally no, described me in such no. detail. I did. Um, in your defense, I've been I'm like so mad. <laughs> Wait, I'm actually not in your defense, but just from <laughs> <laughs> I one time told a story, did not use her name. I said where she grew up, and I said all of these things about her. Mm. And people found her tenfold. They found her, and she went on TikTok. She's like a huge TikTok star. And she made like a (laughs) four-part thing about what I said. Yeah. And I lost sponsors. Like it was, it was crazy. No, but I I feel you 100%. Even in those moments, I was kind of like, oh, like I didn't want people to find you like that. No, yeah, they found me. But I definitely probably gave too many details. Even the guy in the video, that's the guy that like we'd both hooked up with. They knew every single character. They found the guy. He started selling shirts on a clothing line in graphic design of the video like was making graphic designs about the video because there was a movie because there were so many people finding so many people like finding him that he was like i'm gonna capitalize off of this like as well you know and i did not capitalize actually yeah i did (laughs) yeah you monetized the video (laughs) no but eventually we became friends again and if anything i think we are 10 times closer friends after all of that it did. It sounds we crazy, before. but like I feel like a big fight sometimes will really like make or break a friendship. Like, and most of the time it like. No, and I feel like weirdly once we came back together, we were like, that was lit. <laughs> like, we're it's cool now. so like. <laughs> I feel like people still hold on to it now. And like that affects like the way a lot of people at least think about me. But I like. Really? Me as a dramatic ass really? fucking dumb bitch. Well, people like. Because I mean, obviously like loyal Tana fans and stuff. They're like, fuck that girl. But like. I, I don't. I definitely think that. Most loyal Tana fans love the podcast and love you. And I hope every so. comment on the podcast is about Brooke and not me now. No, like, that's not we true. thrive. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. So. But it But we got over it and it was it's funny now. I'll never forget the night we made up. We were like sobbing in a fucking house party. Hysterically sobbing. And so, someone ate her ass on the roof that someone night. Someone ate my ass on a roof. Oh, I, I came thought downstairs. You ate her. I, saw, I thought you were like, I ate her ass. No. On that's the roof how we made night. up, yeah. That would have been honestly kind of fun. No, I got my ass ate on a roof and then I walked down from the party and I saw Brooke and then we hysterically sobbed and I l- and now we have a podcast. I love that. <laughs> so much has happened in between. So, Sincerely, okay. it was like we look at it now as like a blip in our friendship, like a blip on the map and it right. brought us closer. Okay. But you guys have moved on besties super yeah yeah do you guys live you guys don't both we don't live together no but you always have people over right a lot of the time a lot of it's work wise like we'll have Erin or oscar from the podcast come over like Paige, my assistant's here every day robin my new assistant she's been here a lot hair and makeup bullshit Mm -hmm. i'm not like party at mine 24 7 but we all are very like we do have a codependent friend group like whenever any one of us is bored there's there's 12 of us in a group chat we've all been friends for at least four or five plus years, all of us. Mm-hmm. And so we do, we all hang out a lot and we're codependent on each other. Probably right. too much. Right. It's going to be scary one day. Yeah. We always talk about that. We're like, do you think we'll still interact this way when we all have kids? Yeah. Is it sustainable as adults? Like to 
be constantly just like with your friends. No, we're and we're in this. I feel like it group is. chat, and we just update twenty four seven. It's like I just took a shit. What about you? Oh my god, I'm at work. <laughs> I'm doing this. My boss is saying this. Oh my god, I'm hungry. Who wants to eat? Like it's like constant, you know? Right. But don't you feel like because both of you guys are single right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you have a boyfriend, you're not like codependent on your friends anymore. You're codependent on the dude. I'm bad because I integrate the guy super into the friend group. I'm like, you but guys I don't think that's member. bad. I think that's a good thing because I'm a I'm the opposite. Like if I have a boyfriend, they won't see me for six months. You disappear. Yes. Yeah. And it breaks my heart. I know. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Because like, I think there's two different ways of handling that you know but that's a fun concept to just bring them in and then she gets to like be with her boyfriend and her friends yeah but then i'll be fighting with my boyfriend and eight friends are joining the fight right we were just just talking about that a really big fight i got in in mexico with one of my boyfriends where i was fighting with him and like eight of my friends were joining the fight like and they all had your side or they were like on both sides there was a side i think with everyone but the two of us fighting for the greater good like hey you guys are gonna kill each other Let's stop this. Oh, okay. Like type of thing. You well, know? that's fair. But that's that's my downfall for him. What do you like? Do you do you bring do you bring the boyfriend into the friends or do you leave for the boyfriend? I bring him into the friend group, but I think maybe you guys, like your friend group, you guys are way more like integrated. It's bad. I always have guys say, like, if I'm dating you, I'm dating your friends. Like, or clown me saying like like, I know if I fuck up, it's going to the group chat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I try to be very transparent about it. Like, off yeah. I'm like, listen, my friends are my world. Because I yeah. grew up without a family. So, like, my level of blood is, like, my friends. Like, Amari, he adopted me. Like, his family took me in. So, like, everyone's like, oh, that's your best friend. But, like, that's my brother, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, to me, it's kind of like. I definitely come with the people I love. Yeah. And ride for them and kill for them. Right. Well, now that you're saying it, I would say – same situation friends or family a hundred percent but i think they're very integrated into my life but none of my friends live in new york where i live really Really? no i mean some of them but like a lot of them like live like san diego is it like friends from your home or no way just like friends you've made along the way all of my best friends have been my best friends since middle school or high school oh, Giant that's, green see flag. that's really good you, I've been talking you about should be reality. scared of somebody who doesn't have long-term friends mm-hmm. i've been talking about this at length lately is like it is my number i was talking to ari about this today because he like loves this girl and i was like has she ever had a friend for more than a year it's my biggest red fucking flag like, yes i had an ex like that where i like they had nobody to show for like their entire life like no long-term friends and i'm like how biggest red flag it's the weird like and i'm not i understand maybe if you have like a you're not the most social person you have social anxiety so you have one close friend or you have trouble making but you have one you have one or even if you have trouble making friends and maybe you've found yourself as more of a loner i have so much empathy for that i'm not shitting on that i'm not saying everyone in life needs a million friends or close friends i think some people are closer with their family like i have empathy for everyone's like friendship journeys but i'm saying if you're a social person as fuck And you have a new, like, best friend every week. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That's, I think, when someone has a new friend group Uh every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, every two years. Mm -hmm. Huge red flag. So scary. I think if you can't last with the people around you and you're like, yeah, it, it's it is actually my biggest. I could never be best friends with like the type of girl as like new best friends every couple months. No, no, like it terrifies me. No, and that's why I've like moved on from a lot of people in my life. Like someone will want to like latch onto our friend group because our friend group's very like it's been us like ten forever. Mm-hmm. So someone will come in and like they don't necessarily have that, and they like love it and they want to hang out with us all the time. And then we see the drama they're like starting within it, and we're like. Hold on. Uh uh-uh. uh. Your trial done. period on to over. The next Bye. For you. Bye. <laughs> yep. <Bye>. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you believe in relationships can turn into friends? Um, in, from not that? in my personal Tiana's experience. Like, I've seen it happen no. for sure, and I, I, that's not true. I guess I've been like in love with people who I can now be friends with, but I have to be no longer in love with them, and that's very uncommon. Exactly. I'm usually in love with them forever. <laughs> Till I die. Like, I'm in love with, like, like 10 people still. If I date you, like, passively, like, we can be friends. You know? Yeah. Like, if I date you when you're, like, 
my boyfriend for a couple months, like mm. whatever, like we're friends. You know, if I've ever been in love with you, it definitely takes time. And there's certain people that I date and love and can't be friends with. What about we can't be friends. <laughs> Aww. We probably could be friends. That was a joke. But we're not going to like send each other a meme over text. But that's for me right. though. I don't necessarily think his reasoning would be the same as mine. That's just my personal reasoning. Yeah. What's the James Charles, Jake Paul thing? Like what's the what? beef? Or like what did they have going on? Wait, like together? What do you mean? Well, those are two people I've had a lot of <laughs> separate beef with. <laughs> You're like, I fucking trauma. think of outside. No. Um, Dylan Dennis, I did a podcast with Dylan him. Dylan Dennis. Yes. He, he is like <laughs> not a real person. He's an icon though. So I met Dylan Dennis because he wanted to fight Jake, right? Yes. And this was at a time where I was like very affiliated with Jake. And I was out at a club one night in Los Angeles. Fetty Wap was performing. <laughs> I'll never forget Seven, it. Slay. Is it 1738. Fetty Wap was performing and I'm so drunk, you know, and I'm I'm on a vibe. I'm Fetty Wapping it up and I'm taking photos with a lot of like girls that were at the club. Mm -hmm. And this guy comes up and he's like, let me take a photo with you. Like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I pose. And he's hitting like a, like a boxing oh, sample. Oh shit. I have no idea what it is. A couple days go by. He posts like at Jake Paul. I'm gonna fuck your bitch. Blah blah. blah. It's mm. Dylan Dennis. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that was his exact caption. Don't cancel me. And I was like, you motherfucker, like making it look like yeah. I'm like hooking up with you or like doing something. So for a while, I was like, oh my god. And then I think I beefed with him online too. And it like I don't remember again. Xanax 2019 era <laughs> bad. Um, I don't really remember. But uh, anything 2019 2020, it's like a mm. blur. It was a, a very fun time of my life. And the pivotal memories I have from that era are amazing. Like, I had so much fun. And I learned so much. Like, again, I always say that about Jake. Like, I learned so much about, like, navigating this world and how to find longevity in it and hard work and drive from him and his world. So there's not much negative I could really say. A hundred percent. But you camera, can't recall anything about James Charles and Jake. Well, what do you mean? No, I'm asking. <laughs> I think I, I can think recall that so many things point. about James Charles I, and so I, many things about Jake, like on the separate aspects. He kept it very surface level vague. He was like, just ask Jake Paul about James Charles. So I thought I'd ask. <laughs> um, but you don't know. I'm sure they so, know each other. They definitely know each other. I'm just, I mean, here's the thing as well. Like, I'm never one to like speak on someone that I've been close as close, right? Chug your wine. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> Close with life, interpersonal life and their NDAs shit. If everyone talks about my NDAs. Well, honestly, wouldn't be that bad. Well, do you, but, I actually have a question. Do you have like um, an assistant or anyone you hire? Does everyone have to sign an NDA with you? Everyone doesn't. Because I think that when you get to that point where everyone you ever meet ever has to sign an NDA, Jesus. Either, well, first of all, <laughs> if you're Jennifer Lopez and you're that famous, okay, right. everyone does. But right. like in my world, if right now, like my podcast producer had a friend come over and I was like, here's your NDA. It's like, what are you doing in the yeah. house? Like having a sex ring or doing heroin? <laughs> like relax, you know? If you're going to hire someone, they sign one. They'll sign an agreement that encompasses part of a non-disclosure, but mm -hmm. it's not a full non-disclosure. Like, if I were to do something horrible to you, speak on it. Like, I'm not, I'm never going to make you sign something that says, if I'm a terrible person, you can't speak on it. Right. Am I going to sign some, am I going to have something signature ready that says you can't talk about the intricacies of my life for clout? Mm -hmm. Like, a, like maybe a smaller NDA and like a work agreement? Sure. Yes. You know? Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Something appropriate. Like, Yes. Never something that like wrongs the moral code of the world. A hundred percent. Because I think it's funny because NDAs came about in Hollywood years and years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you saw so many people abuse the ability yes. to have an NDA. Yeah, like, like the, once someone signs it, like you yes. can get away with anything. Yes. Yeah, like, oh, Harvey Weinstein's giving out an right. NDA and then fucking being yes. awful. Like, like when you go to a party and it's like a super famous athlete's party and everyone that goes has to sign an NDA. That, Why? I had a situation yeah. like that and someone like threatened me after, like for talking about it. I'm like, okay. What? Like, and it's so funny too because – no one ever talks about this. Like that athlete's having a party, right? Mm -hmm. And he's making everyone sign an NDA to walk in. 
Why? And then, and then some girl goes home and makes a TikTok about it. Uh-huh. He's not suing her. No. Yeah, she doesn't know yeah. what her, like, no. it's, I was talking about this today. The amount of legal fees and time it takes to sue someone, you have to really feel like there's a benefit you're going to reap or comeuppance you need to get. Or someone's coming at your neck tenfold slander-wise to where you well, have to clear your name. And also, like, not to mention, if you want to go after that person, you're making it a way bigger news story. Yeah. So, yeah, it's and like, so like, the point of having everyone sign an NDA who walks in your house is just so crazy. Like, yeah. if, if I had a party and everyone who walked in signed an NDA and then someone posted... I saw Tana do Molly on the counter. I'm not going to sue them. That would cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yes, they technically defied the NDA, but it's like that's a point. Like that's why Yeah, I why feel like I it's to scare to people, sign. like to in, like intimidate people so that they don't go home and make yeah, a video like that. Yeah, because people will sign it and they like don't know any better, 100%. And that shit's all whack. I want to talk about dating because you guys live in LA, single gals. What is it like dating here? Do you feel like there's a, well, you live in New York. Do you feel like there's a big differentiation in dating in LA and dating Mm -hmm. in New York? I do. Educate me on that before I answer. I want to know why. I think that the dating pool in LA when it comes to men is typically actors, models, men that want to be in the entertainment industry when it comes to LA. Yeah. In New York. I think it's models and models. It's well, it's models and actors, but then you have like your finance bros. Mm. Yeah. Like you, you know, finance bros exist in LA. They do. (laughs) They do. They're not on the same level though. It's like they're not working at nowhere near Morgan Stanley or wherever you were talking about. Yeah. You're saying there's like finance guys here, sure, not at the same amount New York has. New York definitely has more. And also, I just feel like, I don't know. New York has like more cult, like artists. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. Just, I feel I like know. there's more men in New York, I like real think, men. Mm-hmm. People in New York are also New York people. Mm-hmm. I like East Coast people so much because they're very much more honest. They're very much more fast paced. They're very much more, they know what they want, so on and so forth. LA, especially Hollywood, I don't I don't want to just like classify it to all of California or anything like that. But people move here because they're like, I'm too good for my hometown. I'm gonna yeah. make it there. It's like so, an ego thing. Like people come here because they think they can come here or should come here. Yeah. And there's one thing I think about coming here like for <laughs> your job. You know, like, oh, I have this job and it's making me this much money and there's more opportunity here. But so many people move here before that happens. Like, I'm going to make it there. So it's, you Smart. deal with a yeah. lot of narcissism. Whereas in New York, I think you you see so much more. People like, who are just working hard to get to where they're yes, at. Yes, yes. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure there are good guys here. I just haven't found one. Um, <laughs> I feel like New York is more just like, I don't know. You go to New York to find a husband here. It's like everybody, it, everything's for show. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. As someone who lives in New York, you're going to find more men in New York that have like family values Mm. who want to get married. Like they don't have Peter Pan syndrome as much. Yeah, that's the thing. Every man, like actual man, I guess here is like 40 and they don't think they're old enough to settle down. And Mm -hmm. it's like, baby, you need to have children. I'm going to step out of the perspective of our realm and say that I think a big problem of why we think that is because we are dating in such a niche yeah. realm. Yeah. But we're choosing to, to do to that. We could that we could easily find like, somebody I'm, with like a normal mm-hmm, job. Yeah. There's like, plenty of people. Yeah, like I'm going to sit here and say like, oh, men in LA are awful. Yeah, it's because I only choose to date fucking <laughs> musicians and TikTokers and whatever. Yeah. Like if I, if I were to take the time to become classier and go hop into the fucking <laughs> agency world, I'm we sure We do try I'd to meet- jump into those pools though every once in a while. Like our friend Natalie will always like, she'll be like, listen, this is such a good opportunity. So many good guys, big jobs, like lots of money, great guys. Like- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we just don't go. Or she'll go. I actually just went (laughs) recently and I met this amazing guy who was from New York. He invited me to the Hampton soon. He lives there. He's a finance bro. (laughs) Wait, is this the Epstein Island guy? Nope. Super different. Because I know who that (laughs) fucking guy is. (laughs) I know who that is, but I think it was his friend. We have to talk about it off camera. We we will. Whatever city you (laughs) date in, it's the group of 
people that you are choosing to associate yourself with that you're going to limit yourself to that realm. Uh, you know? Yes. Always. Like, yeah, we'll choose like a musician or an athlete and they'll be like shocked when they cheat. And it's yeah, like, like no well, shit. Yeah. 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 And I've done both here, like dated guys who have very normal jobs and they were good guys, but maybe their intentions weren't amazing with me. Like, I think everything is about kind of vetting people for who they are, wherever you are. Right. And what world you choose to engulf yourself into. I think that's the biggest thing is we're engulfing ourselves in worlds that are setting us up for dark worlds. Yeah. Not great guys. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, dating in LA is so bad. Yeah. Because you're in a fucking <laughs> studio till 2 a.m. with a fucking piece of shit rapper. Yeah. Maybe if you woke up at 9 a.m. and went to a fucking like. <laughs> Meet a guy at Air One or something. Yeah. Like. like Air One. Exactly. Grocery shopping. Probably not even there. Maybe not Air One, one though. Because like, like, everyone who goes like, to yeah, Air One thinks they're it, better it, than See, that's a good example of who you don't want to end up with. I hate the Air One culture. I ha- look, it's, that's my smoothie right there. I just had it. <laughs> no, I'll drink an Air One smoothie, but I'm saying the people who will only grocery shop there, like you're happier paying that's $12.99 I don't for a care carton of eggs. How much money you have, why are you spending that? That that's just insane. feels so reckless. Yes. Mm-hmm. Except just for my sad. smoothie. Like it's just Except sad. that I was there earlier. Except today. for my smoothie. Like, do you really think your eggs are better because they're $12.99 versus $4.99 at like Whole Foods? Like, no. relax. No. And even Whole Foods is a luxury in comparison to a Walmart or to a To me, an egg is an egg. But exactly. That's what I'm saying. An egg, egg is, an, is egg. an egg no matter how small. Yeah. <laughs> and is it a, <laughs> can we just talk about Dr. Seuss? Can though? we just talk about the concept <laughs> of cage free eggs so for brilliant. one second? Wait, what is that? Like a chicken that isn't in a cage? Like, why do they sell <laughs> eggs? They sell <laughs> eggs for more, saying these eggs are cage free. They probably have a better quality of life. Well, supposedly, but I've heard but the all chickens those still labels, died no matter what. But no? I've heard all those labels are bullshit. Organic. Oh, I I've even heard so bullshit. Stupid. But you know what? We're not going to talk mm. about produce or okay. Eggs. Yeah, yeah. Too, much, too much time on eggs. Okay, I sound okay, so rapid. Dumb. We're going to do rapid fire questions. Only fans. You're not on it, Brooke. Mm-hmm. Tanny, you are. Super. How much do you make on there? <laughs> um, Should I what join? Yes. You don't have one? No, but how much? Why don't you? Can you whisper it? Can you give me? Well, how much do you make is a crazy question. Yes. One of the reasons, (laughs) I also work very hard at other things, I just want to say. Sincerely. No. I could sustain sustain my entire lifestyle without OnlyFans if I had to, but it is a nice luxury that keeps everything afloat. Okay. Sincerely. Amazing. Um, You don't have to give me a dollar amount unless you want to. I've definitely made at least... I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm I know I'm quitting, like I need a raise. At least. I'm quitting this podcast right after this. Episode. I actually I never say that too. I I normally just lie. Like okay. I'm just like no, I don't know. Okay. Well, over it for sure. That's but, incredible, amazing. But you also why don't make you a do shit it? ton. Do you, you would make so much money. Well, I also I also get very scared. What about the wizard sleeve? Oh, that, that's a bonus. I, you know there's a market for that. I'm going to need to see that after this episode. Why don't <laughs> Pants wait, down. I show you? Can I ask you a rapid fire question? Sincerely, Go. why have you never started an OnlyFans? Because I feel like I can barely podcast, TikTok, uh, Instagram. <laughs> Is that the real reason that you don't feel like you have the time? Kind of. But, but don't also, you feel like also, if you onboarded like a, a couple employees to help you with that, that you would supersede the earnings and pay them? Yeah. Okay. Supersede their earnings. I, yes. Sincerely. Yes. Yes. But also, are you showing vagina? No. All the time. <laughs> Not on OnlyFans, no. but on OnlyFans. In real life all the time. But on OnlyFans, no. I do. Yeah, I do a lot of things on OnlyFans. I do not. Ness, I have not shown my holes yet. I'm waiting for my sex tape era, for sure. I'm sorry. Okay. So, yes, I will be making one. So You should. You're not showing that yet, but you might. I might. I might do anything. I mean, never say never. But it's so funny because I feel like you post, do you post like bikini photos and stuff like that? A thousand. I will post a bikini photo with a non-existent bikini and just my ass. Oh, we have to talk off camera. <laughs> and I'm going to be insane. Are you guys going to be my OnlyFans managers? Yeah. I do that. That's a big part of my life. That's fucking hot. That. It's Hannah, you're hot. 
Should we fuck? I okay. will have sex with you. No. Are I'm you like, are you questioning it at all? No, having sex I'm with you? No. <laughs> Wait, only fans no, that are I will sex. have sex with you. <laughs> I will too. You guys heard it here first. Okay. Mike Malek sincerely told me that you and me would either be best friends or fall in love. So, well, he is he might correct. have had a point, and I hate he wanted that to Mike Malek was ever right, but I think he was. Okay, so Tan and I are gonna fuck. We're gonna wrap this up by answering <laughs> one listener question. Just one. Let's do well, five. Okay. Maybe like, I don't know. We'll see. Two. I'm having so much fun. We'll see. I love Sophia okay. with an app. <laughs> She's not shaking. Sophia I'm is not shaking. shaking. <laughs> Sophia and Tiana are shaking As on OnlyFans. Only that is fucking clever. Okay. I'm not mad. Brooke is managing. Okay. Here is the first question. Um, My listeners wrote these in. So we have to give them like real advice, you guys. Okay. Okay. Question number one. Hi. So, <laughs> love her so far. I can't. I can't. Hi, me. Hi. I. Okay. My mom was visiting, and she was being really opinionated and bossy, and I started getting really upset. My husband snapped at her and told her to stop. When we were alone, I told him never to be rude to my mom again and that it was unacceptable that he was disrespectful to her. He apologized, but I kind of feel like an asshole. Like he was just trying to stand up for me, but he saw how upset I was getting. But like, you don't respect my mom. Am I in the wrong? I butchered that because I didn't have no, her. No, no, but we no, got, no, we got no. the gist we, for sure. Got it. No, do you want to go first? I... I don't I don't know how I feel about this because I have been in situations, for example, like if Tana and I are in a fight mm -hmm. and like my friend is there, mm -hmm. like if my friend were to jump in and like snap at Tana, I'd be like, that's not your friend. Like you can't do that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of how it is, like how someone can be mean to your sibling or like you can be mean to your sibling, oh. but your friend can't mm -hmm. kind of thing. It sucks yes. because I never want to speak on a gender role. It's hard because like if I'm with a man, I genuinely think you should never speak with ill will towards my mother. That's my That's own battle that I'm going to have with my mother. And then I can jurisdict how I feel about that. And then you and I can discuss that later. But I also understand a man who's dating you, watching someone disrespect you and want to have your back, you know? Yeah, well, I'd yeah, be like happy that, that he like defended 18, me. My, my birth dad was being super abusive and my boyfriend at the time had like tried to fight him. And I was like, I really respect that you're doing that because like it's it's a sad situation to watch someone you love be in an abusive situation and you want to like take care of them you know yeah but that's a tough yeah that's tough but I think there should be boundaries family wise and I kind of think I guess if you feel like your boyfriend's the one and you're gonna marry him because you never want to get to that point with someone unless it's like a long term thing right mm -hmm. like you never want to have your your boyfriend fighting with your mom if it's like. Not the one gonna you're going to marry. Yeah, I feel like she'll otherwise carry that. it's like, why are you fighting with my mom? Let's yes. just break up, you know? Yes. Then you have a conversation with your boyfriend of like, here are my personal boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be this close with my mom. And if you're going to defend me. Yeah, but at the same time. It's just it, not. I feel like it might just not be. It just sounds claim. like an unhealthy situation overall. And then maybe you should work out your own personal discrepancies with your mom and come to a point where you guys have boundaries and you're comfortable at where you're at. Mm -hmm. Same with your boyfriend. Right. And you can have validation to your boyfriend for like, thank you for having my back. Yeah. That's important yeah. too. I think. This was nice. I mean, we don't know what the fuck her mom said. Right? Like if she yeah. said something completely like racist, mm. homoph like yeah. that's valid. Yeah, then, then I do want my boyfriend well, of to Of course, that's yes. all off bounds. Then, then it's like you're an idiot. Right. But if your mom was just opinionated in a very generic, like basic way. Yeah. It's, I think I the boyfriend think, needs to. Yeah, I feel like that's between you and your mom. And yeah. that's just. Like, I also think like, she needs to unpack the fact that she feels guilt for being upset about that. Thank because you. That's it's a, like, that's a bigger red flag. If here. he was just trying to defend you, then thank him for that. And you guys yeah. can again move on and establish boundaries. If you're feeling guilt in a way where. Because you like, stood up for your mom. Yeah, you don't then, have to then, feel guilt for standing yeah, up for your mom. Yeah, then do you have a. Uh, 
weird relationship with either your mom or your boyfriend where you have to feel guilt for standing up for yourself or for, I don't know. That's a huge I, situation. I thought the same thing. I think, honestly, all of that just boils down to having proper communication with boundaries with the both your boyfriend and your mom. <laughs> oh, it's her husband. Yes. Yeah, that is fair. Once you get married, you become kind of family, so. Okay, next question. Hey, Slew. So recently I got a sneaky link, but I have a boyfriend. Oh. So, like, tell me how to treat the sneaky link. Should I be texting him and FaceTiming him, like, when we're not together? <laughs> or, like, how do I do this? Let me know. I'm genuinely just saying this. That's so, so wrong. To give her advice on how to manage a sneaky link. Don't manage that. If I don't. You, yeah, if you don't. don't like your boyfriend enough as a human being to have a sneaky link. Thank you. Yeah. Cheating is wrong. And let's end it on that note. Tiana Brooke, I love you guys so much. We love you. I feel like I've known you, both of you, my whole life. Obsessed. <laughs> Thank you so much Sophia for coming on. goddamn F. Thank you for having I us. I am shaking. Sophia, I Tana mean. Tana is shaking. Tana is shaking now. Thank God. And uh, go listen to Cancel. No, I think I have to have sex with you. Okay. I mean, we are. Yeah. Brooke, the fact you said okay and you're not like, okay, like tag you don't me in. I'm going to be like like with the camera. Oh, okay. Amazing. Someone amazing. For Sophia's OnlyFans drop. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, guys. I love you so much. I will talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you for having us. Woohoo. Woo